So I'm joined a little bit early to ah, just welcome everyone. Hello everyone, we're just uh, all starting. Just waiting for a couple of more people and then uh, we will start our Christmas class. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh yes, Anna, I was going to say, please do put your videos on so we can see your reactions. And I absolutely love that reaction. So thank you so much um for participating hello chris it's so nice to see you um face to face hi there us. yes how are you doing yeah not too bad using the thermomixes in this lockdown again i know i know it's been very very handy hasn't it oh it does all the kneading of my dough and everything so i just have to pop it in the oven it's great oh great 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 So we have quite a few people registered this morning, which is very, very exciting. And um, we just hope that we can bring some Christmas cheer to all of you at home. I think, I mean, luckily, hopefully this is the last weekend where we're, you know, fully locked down, but at least we have a captured audience with all of you here. And I'll just wait for more people to um, sign on. I, I'm, I'm using two laptops, so all my new sign-ons <laughs> are from my other one. Um, but it's just, yeah, really good to see everyone. And please feel free to share your video. You're more than welcome to put yourself on mute, but it really is very helpful for us to um, see your reactions. And uh, feel free to use the chat box um, so you can tell us uh, where you're where you're from, um, if you have a Thermomix already, because we do have a number of um, guests today who perhaps don't have Thermomixes yet or perhaps don't have the latest Thermomix. So we um, are willing to answer all questions. I have four team members um helping me well well three team members helping me today and uh yes we're just really looking forward to it and keita is the special offer still on for the tm6 and tm5 together yes it is it is in which case anyone who's on the fence and is thinking of buying one it's just stupidity not to go for that offer i'd have to say it. i have both <laughs> and they're both always in use so the the tiny difference in price to get the tm5 as well it's just a no-brainer Oh, thank you so much for that, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it is an, an, a, an absolute no brainer. The, the Black Friday deal, which we'll talk about, um, is $15.99 for the TM5 and TM6, uh, which works out $450 for the um, previous model. Um, absolutely great, like Chris said, to have. Uh, one each on your in your house, but also great for a gift. I've had many people giving them um, as gifts as well. So um, yes, we'll go for that. And right, we are growing, growing um, <laughs> with the number of, so we have 27 at the moment. Um, and we will just uh, wait just a couple of more minutes um, while we also look at the chat up. So, what I wanted to do is firstly introduce myself um, and my team, and then we will show you some wonderful Christmas um, recipes that we have um, prepared and will prepare live in front of you. Um, so let me introduce myself. My name is Ankita Stopper. I'm a Thermomix advisor and team leader based in Canary Wharf. I've had a Thermomix 
for well just over 12 years and I've been an advisor for about two months shy of that. I absolutely loved my Thermomix, couldn't stop talking about it and wanted to share uh, this, this really my passion of this you know super kitchen machine with everyone and hence became an advisor. I have three of my team members um, with me who are in various places of London. Um, and if I shoot over first to Fabrizio, who has been uh, demonstrating now for four years. Yeah, hi, thank you. Thank you, hi everybody. Uh, yes, um, I've been an advisor for four years. I'm uh, of course part of your team and I have been uh, using the Thermomix um, for many years as um, being Italian, um, I grew up with it in my family. Um, and then four years ago, I decided to join uh, your team and I'm um, loving every minute of it. I'm based in Mill Hill in Northwest London and um, I can't wait to get started today. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And um, Fabrizio, I mean, has, has, you know, not only is a fabulous advisor, but he has the most amazing social media pages as well. And at the end of the uh, demonstration, I will um, put links to our team members as well, um, just to kind of, you know, share the glory. Um, so after Fabrizio, we have uh, Barbara. Now, Barbara is our newest team member. She's just been advising for six weeks. So this is her first uh, cooking class and her first virtual cooking class as well. Uh, Barbara was a TM5 owner and she joined us on our Earn and Demonstrate program to earn her new Thermomix. Um, and I'm glad to say in six weeks, she's already halfway there. So welcome, Barbara. Tell us about yourself. Hi. Uh, I'm Barbara. I'm originally from Austria. I'm living in Lewisham. Um, I have my TM5 since three years now. And um, during lockdown, I've, I've seen a lot of people struggling with cooking, especially moms with small children uh, and homeschooling and all of that. And for me, it was not really such a big topic because with the Thermomix, yeah, it basically cooked most of the stuff itself and I was able to still play and learn with my children. So I thought, okay, why not help other moms out and um, yeah, share my passion for, for cooking. Wonderful. And she has a lot of passion. I mean, I remember Barbara is actually my client initially and, you know, it was very funny because she wasn't quite convinced about Thermomix because she's a fabulous cook. She's a fabulous cook. Um, but it's so nice to see that her time with Thermomix has, has, you know, changed her opinion that even great cooks can get, you know, just use it as um, a sous chef as well. And finally, we have Ellie, um, who has been advising now for six months, and I let her introduce herself. So Ellie? Ellie, you're on mute. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Me of that advert. Have you heard it? You're on mute. 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 Go for Thanks it. very much, Ankita. Yes, I've been a Thermomix advisor since the beginning of the first lockdown. I've been in love with Thermomix since I had my first TM31 um, in 2013 um, and uh, just kind of really wanted the new model. I think the TM6 is just wonderful, uh, would allow me to cook so much more. I was using my TM31 loads, but I just desperately wanted the new one. I thought, why, why pay for it when you can earn it for free? So <laughs> I've loved it. And it's been a really real joy to have this sort of going on throughout this coronavirus. So it's given me a real um, zeal for, uh, for cooking and for exploring the, all the recipes on Cookie Do. Thank you, Ellie. And you did earn it. I mean, you earned it, you know, within two months. So it was, you know, a very, very, very great result. Okay, so what we're going to be making today is we have uh, five recipes. The first one I will do, which is um, an Estonian Kringle. Uh, we then move over to Fabrizio, who will be making an artichoke, a hot artichoke dip. Uh, 
then for Barbara with cheese straws, Ellie with, I think she picked it first because it's the chocolate truffles. It has to be my favorite of the menu. I love chocolate. <laughs> I'm a complete chocolateaholic. Um, and then we're gonna make a Rudolph mocktail um, as well. Hopefully all in about an hour and a half and have plenty of opportunity for you to ask questions. Now, what we will do is I know sometimes for, from the screen, it's difficult to, to actually read what we're doing, but we will be reading for you what we're actually doing. And all of these are our cookie do recipes as well. Feel free to use the chat box um, as often as you can, because while I'm cooking, one of my other team members will be monitoring the chat box and making sure that we're not missing any of your questions. So, um, the Estonian Kringle, uh, and it's, it, it's strange. When we do cooking classes like this, and you always remember how great the recipe is. And I don't think I've made the Estonian Kringle since last Christmas, um, because I think it's, it's very festive, it's very sweet, it's very um, indulgent, just what we want for Christmas snacks. I'm gonna just put the proviso up there anyone is local to me in Canary Wolf, I'm actually making two Estonian Kringles. So um, you might be able to nab one off me if you are local. Uh, so what I have done is I actually put the, uh, the recipes that I'm making in my Thermomix today in my planner. Um, the great thing of actually using the planner is twofold. First of all, you know, you just have to click the day that you're cooking on um, and your recipes are there straight away. The other thing is it's great for making a supermarket a shopping list, um, which funny enough, I did last night. So Estonian Kringle, very much like a um, cinnamon buns or cinnamon dough. And some of the things I'm gonna do today are gonna be uh, showing you how to measure because obviously the Thermomix has uh, measuring scales. Uh, please feel free to tell me if you actually have a Thermomix or which model you have because I know we have some guests today who um, are still in that decision purchase. So um, yeah, write it on the chat box and Fabrizio can let me know. So the first thing we need here is uh, 30 grams of sugar and <laughs> The fact that it's live, someone's put away my sugar that was right next to my computer. So bear with me. <laughs> let me grab it. Uh, while you get your, uh, uh, just Sorry? let you know, while you're getting your uh, uh, sugar and keto, just let you know, we've got quite a few uh, people on the chat. So we've got friends from Spain, from Brazil. Someone, a friend of Emily's is actually in Italy, but she's Australian. Um, they're all asking um, if they'll be able to get uh, recipes emailed back to them. Uh, I see Ellie already, she has already replied, so we will be sending uh, the recipes as well as the recording will be available for them. Um, so we've got TM5 as well as TM6 and also TM31 owners today. So it's quite exciting, uh, quite a bit of a, of a variety for the day. Oh gosh, yes, it is. It is a variety. Yeah, brilliant. We might be able to um, take advantage of the, the, the Black Friday offer, as Chris said earlier, for any of those TM31 customers, definitely. Um, great, so my 30 grams of sugar has been put in and we now need one, uh, one lemon and the peelings of one lemon. So I have obviously, you don't need to see me peel a lemon. Um, and so I just peel this uh, very, very carefully um, to not have any of the, the white pith. So that goes in there, press next, and we close the bowl. And this is basically gonna kind of grind the lemon and the sugar uh, together. So it says put on the lid, press next, and it's 15 seconds, speed 10. Now, 
it's interesting when we do uh, face to face demos and people used to always say to me, oh, you know, oh gosh, Ankita, that's so noisy. I think of it slightly differently, not in noise terms, but look at the power. So if you see in 10 or 15 seconds, that has basically just obliterated um, all of that lemon peel um, so beautifully. So we're gonna scrape this down. And it now says 120 grams of milk. So again, the Thermomix is weighing. Well, you're weighing the milk and kita, and that Chris was actually uh, just uh, typed in a very good idea for our, for our viewers to um, open cookie dough and follow the recipes along as we are cooking them. That's, That's a really lovely idea. idea too. That's a really <laughs> lovely idea. Depending if you have um, more than one, um, yeah, uh, device. So yeah. if you're watching this on your phone, then you can have. Um, the cookie do open on your computer. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's a lovely idea. Uh, so 120 of milk. Now we need um, 30 grams of, of butter. So I've got my butter and, you know, just little pieces here. That was 15. 28. Now the beautiful thing about the TM6 is that it obviously weighs in one gram increments, which is a slight difference from the TM31 and the TM5, which was in fives. Um, 15 grams of, of yeast. So now it does say fresh yeast, um, but I'm actually using dry yeast which is absolutely fine. Because what happens in the next step, which is one minute 37, speed two, we're actually warming up the milk and the yeast to be able to activate it. And that's again, a really wonderful thing about the Thermomix. You don't need to be warming the, um, the yeast in any other way. Um, it does it all for you. And Kita, there's one of our viewers, Anna, she says she's not managed to, she, she actually hasn't come across the offer online. Um, so if you want to just touch base on the Black Friday bundle, otherwise I'll do it if you like. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. What we will do is because everyone has registered, um, when I reply to everyone, I'll have all the, the offers and things like that on your emails. Um, and I, you know, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Um, what we will also do is, you know, link you to your advisor or, or the person who originally um, introduced you to this cooking class. Because even though there's the, the four of us doing the um, demonstration today or the class today, um, our team is actually about 17 people. So, um, yes. Great. So that is nicely um, mixed. And again, I believe in live classes. Uh, there's so much that we can do um, in advance, but the whole idea is I don't want you to think that this is for professionals or this is for, for chefs. So the next thing is add one egg yolk and I'm gonna break it in front of you and show you that anyone can be making these recipes and just following it. Um, as we go along. So that's my egg yolk. I've got a wet towel. Uh, oh, I threw, oh no, I put it in. I threw the shell. Um, <laughs> all right, um, one egg yolk and then mix again. And now at four seconds, speed three. Okay, um, I've got a question, this one is for me, um, regarding the, the dry um, um, what's the equivalent in Italian? Yes, is the uh, powder yeast, so lievito uh, in polvere, the way we say it in Italy, and that's the equivalent. Um, also, it's, if it's easy to actually uh, purchase the fresh yeast, 
is also a nice alternative. For example, when we make pizza um, for the dough, we can use either 20 grams of um, fresh yeast or um, eight grams of dry yeast. So hopefully um, that should help, yeah. Absolutely, and I guess the thing is, I mean, in lockdown, I have to say, it's been harder for me to find um, fresh yeast than it was uh, pre-lockdown. Uh, first of all, I know Ocado definitely sells it. So if anyone does have their Ocado online and they are in the UK, for example. Um, but otherwise, I generally found any uh, supermarket that had a bakery, you could always nip over to them, ask them really nicely if they could give you some fresh yeast. And I would get anywhere from um, 50 to 200 grams of fresh yeast, often free because I smiled nicely but sometimes as, as cheap as 16p because they don't really, there's no value to it. It's not really, you know, a product sold, but if you do ask um, supermarkets, they, they will give it to you quite readily, which is um, a nice thing. So we're now gonna put 300 grams of bread flour and I have pre-measured that because, you know, you don't really need to um, see me weigh 300 grams of, of flour. Um, one pinch of salt. And this is actually one thing that I always quite like to, to, to tell you. Um, I often use sea, molden sea flakes or Himalayan sea salt. Um, and so you can actually be adapting the recipes as much as you want to as well. Um, I can just see Tracy, you've asked a question. Is fresh yeast better than dry yeast? Um, I'm gonna, I mean, I think fresh yeast is often quicker to activate and rise than dry yeast, but now the dry yeast is, is fabulous. As long as it's fresh, um, I, I remember often going to people's homes where, um, you know, the yeast has been in their fridge or their cupboard for two years and it's then passed its sell-by date. Um, so you have to make sure that if it is dry yeast, it is within the use by date or the best before date. Um, obviously the advantage of dry, fresh yeast is that it's great when it's fresh, but it also goes bad very quickly. So, you know, there's no point buying or getting your 100, 200 grams from the supermarket if you're not gonna be using it because it goes off very, very quickly. Um, I do know that often people freeze it as well, but again, the efficiency isn't there um, once you've frozen it as well. Okay, so I put my, um, my flour um, and my salt in, and now we're just going to knead it uh, for two minutes. And again, this is the wonderful thing about you know, all our Thermomix models that it needs um, when you're hands-free. And if I can actually show you the movement of this kneading, it'd be rolling, stopping, rolling again, and, and stopping. And every five times, it flips it around. So again, a really, really wonderful way of not just making a dough like this, but as Freepinichi mentioned, um, pizzas, um, again at Christmas time, brioche, my kids absolutely love a morning, uh, Christmas morning bri brioche, um, again, breads, sourdoughs, croissants, you're all using your, your dough function for that. And has everyone been making uh, breads in their Thermomix? Louise has, definitely. And, oh, and tell me what your favorite breads have been. Oh, Chris, that's a beautiful, did you just make that this morning? Oh, that's so, you showing your photo off your phone. Oh, Irish soda bread, yeah, sandwich bread, okay. Brilliant. Good. Anita says olive bread is fantastic, which is very good. It's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so while we're doing that, I think we've got Jessica who's asked for a new few kneading tips. But other doughs are often runnier. Okay, so Jessica, I think, I guess my question um, with that is, the Thermomix recipes work perfectly, um, but you always have to adapt slightly um, to what flour you're using, and you might need to add a little bit more flour. So oh yes, hi Talia, you're, um, Talia's another advisor on our team. She's stepping in to say that you might need a little bit more flour in your dough as well. Okay, so what we have now is our dough. And if I just show you, it is kind of um, not all come together, um, but that's absolutely fine. Because what we need to do now is tip it into a bowl and let it rise for two hours. Now, the beautiful part of, again, a demonstration, and I was thinking about this. We always say this is, you know, Blue Peter, something we made earlier. And, you know, for people who are grew up in the UK or of a certain age, like myself, they actually know what the whole Blue Peter thing is. But I thought I'd share with you one of the things I did as a family during lockdown. We actually got Blue Peter badges for my kids. And they really didn't know what a Blue Peter badge was until I showed them. But this is, you know, it's a running joke that people say, oh, when you, um, you know, here's something we did before. So this is my dough, which has risen for the two hours. I made it at eight o'clock this morning and it has doubled, um, which is there. So the recipe says tip out and let it um, double. Um, meanwhile, we're gonna prepare our filling. Now, the other advantage of having two Thermomixes or multiple bowls in your Thermomix is I don't have to clean in between. Yes, I can see Chris um, shaking his head in agreement. So what we have is now my second bowl. Um, and again, as an advisor, I have multiple bowls, but it's really, really handy when you're moving from one recipe to another. And it now says 50 grams of uh, walnuts. So I've got my walnuts here, pop them in, insert the measuring cup, and it's two seconds speed five. Jessica is saying she's got plenty of questions a few years ago. <laughs> uh, we are here for that. That's what we're here for. So if you have yeah. any questions, please feel free to ask. We're here to answer them. Yeah, absolutely. So the other option for this, it was either walnuts or candied uh, fruit. So I have gone for the, the walnut option uh, for my Kringle. So tip that away. Press next and 50 grams of butter. Now I'm gonna tell you guys, because I'm doing two uh, Kringles, um, I actually have 100 grams of butter um, purely, and you can double it, absolutely. So that's again the beauty. So I've got, my 100 grams of soft butter. Oh, you know what? I used 30 for the other one, so let me grab something. Um, in the meantime, I've got Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Nice to see you here. Um, yeah, sometimes the dough uh, doesn't rise as much. Um, and she's used a dry yeast. Um, I don't think it's got to do with the dry yeast as such. Sometimes it's got, it's got to do with the temperature itself. Um, do you know that you can also um, actually prove like dough, uh, pizza dough in the, in the TM6 using the, I know you've got TM6 of course, so you're my customer, uh, in, the, in the actual TM6 uh, using the fermentation mode. So Ah, uh, yes, that's brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. brilliant. But that's, um, you know, we used to the traditional way of switching the oven on 50 degrees and then switching it off and then put a dough in there, but you can use it with a thermomix. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I've got my 100 grams of, of butter now, which is double the recipe. Um, it's 60 grams of sugar. So again, I've gone for 120 and two tablespoons of um, ground cinnamon. Um, and I'm gonna use four today. Um, now all my cinnamon is actually freshly ground in the Thermomix. So. Thank you, Dazam. Anna is asking, would you uh, half the dose? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the brilliant thing about any of the, the recipes that are available on Cookie Do is that you can um, use it as it is, or you can double ingredients, or you can half them. Um, the first time you make them, I would always, always say that you stay to the to 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 the size because something something like the cinnamon dough. Yes, I think you could double that very very easily or half it. But when you're making things like a risotto or a stew or a soup, um, if it needs blending, you need the space to be able to you know blend and puree. So sometimes you know doubling it won't might might not give you the the full bowl capacity, but halving it um, or one and halving it might might do it as well. Okay, so we're gonna blend this together for just 30 seconds. Italia, our colleague Italia is also contributing to the chat um, regarding the oven um, doubling of the size. Yes, yeah, sometimes it can be a bit of a trial and error, uh, but you need to be uh, mindful of the maximum capacity yeah, uh, of the thermomix. So it's 2.2 um, liters. Yeah, absolutely. And now I have my cinnamon mixture there as well. So it does say preheat your oven and I have already um, done that. Um, and it's interesting because it now says line a baking tray with baking paper. So I'm gonna show you, um, some people might already have this. Uh, this is a well used um, a silicon baking mat um, from Thermomix. And uh, you can see mine is well used. This is actually a host's gift for anyone who hosts a demonstration um, and has invites three people. Now, when we're doing things virtually, I think it's a really, really great opportunity um, to get a host's gift and actually introduce Thermomix to various different people. So I think Fabrizio has a <laughs> an unused, brand new yeah. version. It is. Yeah, look at that. It comes in such a, a nice um, kind of, yeah, can box. Yeah. And if you do host, then you actually are, are able to um, get one of those baking mats absolutely free. So if we can, I've just moved my Thermomix a little bit back and I'm going to put on a recipe, uh, uh, an apron for this <laughs> part, just purely yeah. so I don't yeah. get flour. Um, on my top. Um, and I see the rest of my team actually do have aprons on. And we're gonna just roll this. So what it says is roll the dough to um, a floured work surface, but I'm actually gonna use my silicon baking mat. Um, and then we wanna um, spread over the filling. So while I do that, you can see me, I'm gonna just spread a little bit of flour on this. But Fabrizio, I mean, we cooked this last year. I mean, this virtual demonstration is it's kind of new to us, but we had a cooking class last year. Um, yeah. And yeah, how are you finding this as a different? We decided to keep the Kringle this year because it was so successful and all our customers love it. And it's really beautiful. It's nice if you want to um, make it for your, uh, your own family. Also, if you want to give it as a gift, uh, for Christmas, if you go somewhere, um, obviously <laughs> be mindful of uh, government guidelines. But if you are allowed to have a gathering uh, with your uh, immediate uh, family, also then you can take that one. For example, it's a beautiful gift. Um, and Kita, what someone is asking, actually, my friend Tracy, um, have you tried freezing the dough? 
um, for the cream roll? Would it would you recommend crazy and um, freezing it and then making for a couple of, couple of days later? Uh, we could try. Um, I've done it with pizza dough. A pizza dough is fine. You can absolutely freeze it. I do it in advance. Sometimes I do uh, pizza dough, for example, for the demonstration. And uh, I'm not planning on eating it in the evening, so I freeze it. And uh, it's still okay. Uh, absolutely fine. I've, yeah, I was going to say, I don't normally free, I mean, I, again, pizza dough, you're right, I, I sometimes make the pizza dough ahead of time, and then put it in the fridge, dare I say it, but I, I you know, how, how long has Tracy had a Thermomix? Tracy, how long have you had one? Um... Uh, let me remember, probably just under a year, I think. Um, yeah, I, think, I was going to uh, say, I think often, often I find, you know, because things are done so quickly that I'm trying to work out why you would want to freeze it. Are you making a double batch and freezing it or are you just doing it to, to save time? I mean, these are things that, yes, there's a little bit of time and labor of love. As you can see, again, for a class, I'm doing the rolling myself and live. Um, but the idea is that everything can be done relatively quickly and in the time that you are giving yourself. So hence, perhaps the freezing or making double batches isn't needed. Um, I know a lot of people pre-thermomix like to do, um, you know, batch cooking to save time, but I'm not necessarily sure how many of them do that once you have a Thermomix, um, because most things do take under half an hour um, to make. I mean, we have other people in our team, so let's see. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is a chapati roller, but it's not rolling the stove. Um, I've got a question. Um, Someone's asking me regarding the uh, fresh to dry yeast conversion. Um, what I did say before, um, that's, um, that applies to the pizza dough recipe, which uses eight grams of uh, dry yeast and about 20, I believe, 20 grams of fresh yeast. Apparently, this, uh, the Kringle recipe um, uses the same amount. Um, so is that okay? Well, I believe it is okay, not just because yes. some of it uh, cooking will say so, uh, but also because maybe that amount of dry yeast um, or fresh yeast, uh, whichever you want to use, is actually required for this specific recipe, yes. Yeah, that's what I would say. Okay, perfect. So, yes, I it is a <laughs> chapati roller. I really like it. Do you like it? <laughs> um, and yes, we do make chapatis and chapati atta in our, our Thermomix a lot. Um, often I have, you know, Asian customers who were so used to cooking um, uh, from scratch without using a, um, any appliances that um, they're often not convinced that they need a Thermomix in their life. But um, this is a great way. Now, I'm going to be honest. I could get a better uh, fully uh, rectangular. But for the purposes of this, it's absolutely fine. And I'm now going to spread half my dough, remember, because um, I had double very, very quickly and evenly over my my dough because the important part of, of this is actually to show you how to to fold it and how to um, make the kringle before we move over to Fabrizio who has been fabulous as my my chat uh, okay. right I'm so we're gonna so See that's that. what else. Um, again, you already said that, you mentioned that regarding the, 
um, the filling of your choice. You can choose walnuts or you know, any kind of fruit. Um, but you can also um, add more filling uh, that you that the recipe says. You know, if, if you if you have a bit of a sweet tooth, you want to add more sugar. Uh, I personally add more. Um, so you, you can of course personalize it uh, to your liking, to your taste. Uh, don't just follow the recipe. You can always add your creativities uh, to the cooking recipes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I've added that and now I'm actually just rolling it very, very carefully to encompass all of it like that. And then what we want to do, we want to cut a hole down the middle. So I'm gonna take, um, you can do this with a knife, but I happen to have um, a bread knife. And cutting it right down the middle. So you have two sides. Um, and I hope you can see that. Oh, I just added the walnuts after when Fabrizio was talking, sorry. Um, and what we have now is I'm going to twist it. So if you can see this top has not been cut, but what I'm gonna do now is twist the Kringle to make a, a, a twist. And then form a circle. So it's kind of like that. All right, I'm gonna make it a little bit neater. Um, but what we then need to do is bake this for 20 minutes. So let me just tidy this up a little bit um, while I pass you over to Fabrizio and the hot architecture dip. Thank you so much. Thank you, Akita. You're um, welcome. Thanks for the beautiful Kringle making. Uh, I love that. I wish I could come and taste it, actually. Unfortunately, I don't live near you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I'll be making a hot artichoke dip, uh, which um, was um, very successful again um, last year. Uh, we tried advices, we tried it before uh, decided to put it on a Christmas class last year, and it was really, really, really nice. Now, um, if you're lucky enough uh, to have this beautiful book, which is called A Very Christmas Thermomix, um, a, a very Thermomix Christmas, uh, apologies, um, this uh, recipe is featured on page 38, so you will find it easily. If you don't happen to have the book, uh, <clears throat> no panic, because you find it, of course, on Cookie Doop, um, either on your um, app, um, on your smartphone, on your home computer, or indeed, if you have a, a TM6 from your um, uh, TM6 touch screen, right? So, yeah, the recipe is here, is on uh, page 38. Now, we all know that we can make uh, dips using the Thermomix, so we uh, usually make hummus, uh, tzatziki, uh, you can also make them masalata. Um, one of the popular ones is also the, the feta and white bean dip. Uh, but not everyone, um, not everyone has made a hot dip. So if you haven't, I really advise you to try because it's really, really tasty, okay? And um, the main ingredient is um, um, artichokes. So I'm going to talk you through the the recipe itself. Uh, so again, I've planned it on my weekly planner. Okay, so I've got it today, I'm gonna bring it up. And I'm starting off by um, putting um, uh, 120 grams of cherry cheese. You can use any cheese, um, of course. In the meantime, my oven is already on 20 degrees, so don't forget that. Um, so 120 grams of cherry to the inside, straight away. Um, and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to talk you to the, through the, the steps because you can't 
uh, most likely see my camera. So I'm going to chop the uh, cheese in just five seconds at speed seven. Okay. And then I'm going to transfer the grated cheese into a bowl. I just want to show you. There we are. So basically just seven seconds, we got beautifully um, grated um, cheese. Okay, so I'm going to uh, transfer to a bowl. And um, for this recipe, uh, although it's always advisable um, to have more than one bowl in the kitchen, for this specific recipe, you don't need more than one bowl because everything um, from the chopping, uh, the mixing, or even the cooking, because we're going to cook the um, actual ingredients uh, prior to baking it in the, in the oven, everything is done in the same bowl and there's not even need to actually rinse the bowl itself, okay? Because everything, all the ingredients, we blend together to make this beautiful cake. Now, if, you, if you're not certain as to which speed uh, do the chopping and the grinding and so, don't forget, if you're a TM6 owner, uh, the back of the book, you have a beautiful uh, guide uh, with all the, um, all the speed and the time uh, recommended for chopping, mixing, grinding, as well as steaming. If you are a TM5 or previous model uh, TM31 customer, then your, your book in the TM5 instance, for example, is a basic cookbook, will have the same section at the beginning of the actual book instead of the, at the back, okay? So if you need any advice on that, uh, we'll give it straight away. So done that, I'm going to add uh, just a garlic glove, just one. Um, it's nice, uh, but of course, if you don't like garlic or if you cannot eat it, you can adjust it, then you can just omit it. Um, and then just three seconds, speed seven again. We're just going to add the garlic nicely chopped. And then we don't take the garlic out, but what we're going to do is um, add artichokes. Now, as you can see, I've removed the lid and um, measured in cup. Um, which means I have to reset the scales, go back to pressing the tear button so that um, the weight can go back to zero. Yeah, so we're going to add uh, 240 grams of artichokes. Now, these artichokes um, were in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in a tin, okay? So you need to actually drain them from the liquid, it be uh, water or, um, or um, oil, okay? So you just keep it to the uh, artichokes. You can use artichoke um, halves or also quarters, okay? So then I've actually kept the mixture because my artichokes were um, in half, so I've kept some halves and some quarters. Then we're going to add 15 grams of olive oil. Again, um, you can use any oil. Um, I'm actually using uh, avocado oil just because I, I like it, but we can use any oil. Probably I wouldn't use extra virgin olive oil um, because the big, big, um, um, and we want to have a nice, delicate um, finish for the purpose of the recipe. So in just one second, speed five. Okay. And when we think about chopping uh, thermomix, how easy is that? I mean, just one second gave us this beautiful consistency. Um, and it's fantastic. Again, when it comes to chopping, um, I'll tell you this while I'm actually scraping down the spatula. Uh, chopping is made so easy, especially when it comes to um, onions, for example. And I always say that during the demonstration. Uh, um, I don't cry, you know. <laughs> Usually when you chop onions, you get tears in your eyes and stuff like that. But obviously that doesn't happen. Uh, with the mix because, um, for example, in the instance of onions, you just put them in as uh, half or, or uh, quarters. Right, so we're going to be um, cooking uh, the artichoke, garlic and oil mixture uh, for three minutes, temperature is 120, the speed is one, and we're using the uh, reverse mold. So the reverse mold is one, the important feature 
that we have on the Thermomix uh, screen. Okay, so why do we use the reverse mode? The reverse mode we use it because we are going to be using the back of the plate rather than the front of it. So we don't want to chop um, the artichoke mixture any further, okay? Uh, we just want to preserve its um, current consistency. The same way as when we make a risotto for a demonstration or again for um, our household, we use the, the back of the blade to initially saute uh, the rice because we don't want to cut the, uh, the rice itself. Um, now, because I'm using a guided recipe, following a guided recipe, um, everything from the time, the temperature, and the speed, as well as the reverse mode, um, was already uh, preset for me. But sometimes I get usually customers asking me, how can you actually input yourself, set yourself the, uh, the reverse mode if you're not following a cooking your recipe? And it's very easy. Um, you can simply do that. Uh, by when you look at the three uh, big dials of the Thermomix, uh, time, churn, temperature, and speed, the, the speed one, the last one, um, just below the uh, speed indicator has a little um, blade icon. And I'm talking about the TM6, yeah? So if you go, if you tap your finger on that blade icon, that um, enables the reverse mode straight away. Now, if you're using a TM5, um, you have a little button in the icon with the actual TM5. And again, same principle, you just tap on that and the Thermomix um, will be doing, uh, will be going into reverse mode. So, the blades will be turning anti clockwise. Okay? That's usually um, something that customers do us. Okay, so this dip is very versatile because um, it can be served with anything. Uh, usually, um, I mean, probably the best way to serve it is to go with, uh, with the, the cheese straws, uh, which uh, Barbara's going to be making. Uh, but you can also enjoy, and that's what I've got done here for us, you can enjoy with some, some crudités. So you can use it, uh, you can use carrots, you can use celery, cucumber, I'm using courgette today, um, and you can use it again as a dip um, and use your crudités if you don't want to um, add more carbs to your, uh, to your diet. And it's very nice. Um, it is a must. You really must try this one. <laughs> um, I totally agree with you, Fabrizio. Again, you know, this is one of the things about um, being advisors and having to do these type of recipes. I think last Christmas, I made this dip three different times. And um, the one I remember being most successful was actually at my son's eighth birthday party where we had it with, uh, I didn't make cheese straws, you're right. Um, but I had it with crudités and pita bread. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, so Moorish that you know people were going oh artichoke chip I'm not sure if I'm going to eat that and then when they tried it it was just delicious. Yes so everything has been cooked now um, all we've got to do is just add some um, sour cream and, and cream cheese okay so it's just 60 grams of uh, sour cream. Now many people uh, will be wondering because I usually cook uh, dairy free uh, uh, vegetarian food um, if there is an alternative. Uh, well, for the purpose of, for today's purpose, I'm, uh, I'm following the recipe as it is, obviously. But again, uh, there's loads of um, dairy free cheeses out there. And I'm adding, sorry, I'm adding uh, some cream cheese, which is about 120 grams. Um, so you are more than welcome to actually use uh, dairy for cheese. Um, when it comes to sour cream, you could use um, you could use um, some yogurt, dairy for yogurt, and then add a squeeze of lemon. You make your own uh, sour yogurt. Let's say, but it's a, it's a it's a good alternative to sour cream as well. Um, so just because you can't have dairy doesn't mean you should be deprived of this delicious. Um, yeah. Okay, so sorry, this one has to go back in, and we're really 118, so that's it. So 120 grams of cheese, 60 grams of um, sour cream, which is 150 grams of cheese, so I have to add 30 grams 
uh, on top of that. So there's always 120. And you go. Okay, so that's it. Fantastic. Okay, and that's it. So it's a very nice and easy um, dip to make for your guests or for yourselves. Uh, if you're watching a nice movie and you fancy something uh, to snack on, uh, this dip with pimites or uh, breadsticks, crusini, um, is a great dip. Okay, then I've got some salt and a pinch of pepper. Okay. And then we're going to close, close it in, and just give it uh, 10 seconds of speed six. Okay. So I don't know, I know some customers of mine were asking me to, uh, to think along, so I don't know if you have been cooking along, but if you ask me to say uh, or indeed if you're making the thing or it's not, the show has already been made, yeah? Um, love competition, see. Um, it's made the best Pringle, made, it's made the best um, uh, artichoke dip and so on. And then I'm going to take one of these dishes, okay, and um, they count the whole mixture, which you can see, it's all nice and um, smooth. Um, all you need basically is about 20 um, by 20 uh, dish. I'm using um, a square one, but you can also use the round shape, it's fine. Um, in fact, the picture um, which you'll find um, on the Christmas cookbook, page 38, uh, features a round uh, dish, but I'm going for square. Um, okay. So what um, we got a tax from Anita, um, a recipe for vegan sour cream. It's with cashews, soya yogurt, lemon juice, and apple cider vinegar for everyone who's uh, dairy free. Well, hi Anita, I hope you're well. Uh, yes, it sounds great actually. Um, it's even better than the yogurt alternative I suggested, but yeah, absolutely. Probably I should try that. <laughs> uh, there we are. So everything is, in, is being decanted in there. Now, can I just add that Anita is a, a brilliant uh, cook with Thermomix. She's, uh, she bought a Thermomix a couple of months ago, and she's a customer of mine, and I'm so proud of what she's been making. Uh, I'm really impressed with it. She sent me some beautiful pictures, and they're absolutely delightful. Every single time I see them, I'm just so pleased with that. Now, okay, the dip is ready. I'm going to pop it in the oven, uh, 200 degrees, as I said, uh, for about 15 to 20 uh, minutes, okay? So I think that's over to Barbara now, yeah? Okay, so it's my turn. Um, I just have to change the camera so you won't see me while cooking, I'm afraid. My kitchen won't allow me to show everything. So here we have the throw mic. Um, okay, here we are. So in my case, the recipe is under the recently cooked section because I've cooked it um, quite a lot this week with my son. And um, as Jessica said, yeah, um, for kids, it's quite funny when the thermal mix is really, really loud. So I had to uh, send my son away, otherwise we wouldn't be able to cook today. So the first thing is, um, it says you have to preheat the oven and line two baking trays with baking paper. I did that already. And now we have to put in 150 gram of cheddar cheese cut in pieces. So, next. Thank you, Anna, for leaving us. Thank you. Lovely to see you. So here we go. Five seconds and speed seven. Fabrizio showed already beforehand, it's just, it's so quick and it's perfectly grated. And um, you don't have to buy grated Parmesan anymore if you have a Thermomix because you can always grate it fresh. And that's actually 
saving you a lot of money. And fresh is always better. So the next step is 200 gram of plain flour. It's one of the quickest recipes I've ever made in the Thermomix because it's just taking less than five minutes preparation time. 100 gram of unsalted butter. One egg yolk. I prepared everything. One and a half teaspoon of garlic powder. One and a half teaspoons of mustard powder. And a pinch of sea salt. And now 15 seconds of speed five to mix everything. Uh, believe it or not, that's more or less all of the preparation. Here we go, one second. Okay. So here we are. So this is our dough. Just, oh, sorry. Roll dough out on a long rectangle. So we will just do it now. As you can see in the background, I have a TM5 tube. Um, my husband wants to get rid of it because he thinks we don't need to. Uh, I, <laughs> I've convinced him that we need to. One for me and for one for my son so we can cook together. That's brilliant, Barbara. How old's your son? He's four. <laughs> <laughs> He's four, but he wants to put everything in the thermomix. He wants to push the buttons. And at the end of um, the cooking, he, he's the one um, running to the living room where my husband works at the moment. And he's completely proud of that he cooked all by himself. Brilliant, and it's, it's also great to do batch cooking. If you've got two machines, you can just set two recipes going at the same time. Yeah, that's one thing. And the other thing is, um, it's my son never has been a fussy eater because he, he always was cooking with me with the thermal mix, so he can see what's in there. And kids want to see what's in, in their food and they want to play with the food. They want to see how it's processed and stuff like that. And I feel for, with the thermal mix, it's, it's way easier because it's, it's a bit safer than with pots and pans on the hot oven and stuff like that. So he's really, he's enjoying it. It's, it's, it's kind of a toy for him, which makes yeah, his food. So <laughs> That's brilliant. I, I have three children and I totally agree with you. I actually get them to choose the, what they're going to have for their dinner every weeknight, looking through the cookie do recipes. And then if they don't like it, I'm like, well, you chose it. You picked it. You helped make it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that's exactly the same situation in my house, yeah. So starting from a short end cut into thin stripes. It should be rectangular. I'm really sorry I didn't manage to do that, but it will still work. So we cut it in stripes. It's a shame that Fabrizio is living so far away from my place because the artichoke dip is just so amazing with the cheese straw. Yeah, they will go really well together. <laughs> yeah. I've made the artichoke dip, but it didn't survive the night. And We've got a question yeah. from Tony saying that he has two, uh, they have two bowls, one for sweet and one for savory. The lid of the savory really has a strong oniony smell. How can I get rid of that? 
I wonder, and also someone's asking about turmeric stains. I wonder, Fabrizio, if your amazing trick with eggshells and lemon juice would help solve that. Would you like to tell everybody your little trick? Well, okay, let's touch um, on the turmeric issue first. Okay, so when you're making your, your curry dishes um, or your curry paste and you're using turmeric, um, it's quite normal for the um, for the, the lid as well as the, as the spatula to turn slightly green or yellowish, okay? So the remedy, the remedy for that is not washing it up, actually. Uh, the remedy is to put them out in sunshine and sunshine will do the trick. Uh, when you, so on a day like this, it's not going to work, okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, when we get a nice sunny day, make sure that your um, accessory like the spatula and the lid uh, enjoy uh, the sun, the sunshine, and the sun baby outside. Uh, when it comes to cleaning, we've got fantastic pre-clean function, uh, which has just been enhanced. Uh, but sometimes there's some stubborn uh, residue at the bottom of the, um, of the thermomix. So usually a good old uh, remedy is to use eggshells. So we use when you're cooking your eggs during the week, maybe reserve the shells. Um, add them um, to the to a, to a freezer bag, and then at the end of the week, once you've got your eggshells together and um, and some lemons, pop them in the thermomix, uh, blitz it out for five seconds, about speed eight, and then add enough water to cover the 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 blades and the mixture, and then um, give the thermomix a nice uh, moisturizing and treatment, as well as a scrubbing, because the eggs will be doing the scrubbing for 30 minutes, uh, temperature 50, uh, speed one. And then you will have a nice, the, the bowl will be clean, and then the lemon will have given a nice, um, nice smell. Okay, thanks, so Denise. That sounds great. <laughs> the next step is brush, brush with one beaten large egg, then sprinkle two spoons of nigella seeds. Um, I have nigella seeds, sesame seeds, um, Cracked pepper and sea salt is working perfect as well. It's up to you, what, whatever you like. My son wants it plain, for example. And that's it, basically. So we put it now in the oven for seven to eight minutes until it's lightly golden. And I hand over to Ali. Great, thank you very much, Barbara. Um, well, I am going to be making uh, chocolate truffles. So I'm just gonna go to my Thermomix and I'm gonna go to recently cooked because I um, already prepared some mixture. Um, and these honestly are absolutely delicious. I love everything chocolatey. Um, so this is right up my street. Um, and as you know, truffles can be very expensive, but they make absolutely wonderful gifts. So this is just one way of kind of saving money in your Thermomix by uh, making edible gifts. So I'm just going to show you how easy it is to make. So you just need 300 grams of dark chocolate and 100 grams of milk chocolate. And I'm gonna insert my lid and I'm just gonna grind that for 10 seconds. So I probably should have warned you that was quite loud. Um, but uh, it's really powered of that chocolate. And actually it doesn't, I used um, callets, but you can, I, I also used uh, just a normal bar of dark chocolate and just pieced it up um, how it's how it breaks naturally. And it also um, finally uh, diced that. And then I'm just gonna add my 300 um, mils of uh, double cream. Just put it all in there. I love it how usually cookie dough recipes use exactly the same uh, measurements as uh, the packaging that it comes in. So that's great. You don't have odd bits of cream left in your cup in your fridge. And 20 grams of unsalted butter. 
and that's just gone in there. And a pinch of uh, sea salt. I always use pink Himalayan sea salt. So I'm with Ankita on the uh, quality of the salt. I think it does make a difference. And then I'm just going to cook all that together for five minutes on speed 50. Uh, sorry, temperature 50 and speed three. And that will just be uh, cooking there. So I don't know if anyone has any questions, but it's just going to make this delicious uh, ganache uh, chocolate, uh, which will be really delicious. I've actually already got some here before from earlier, so I'll show you that. But um, you can, you can, these are actually going to have brandy in it, um, or even better actually. It's going to have some uh, cognac in. I read somewhere that cognac is to brandy what champagne is to sparkling wine. So these are going to be very uh, smart chocolates that I'm going to give to my neighbours uh, over Christmas. Ellie, I am close enough. I am close enough. Myla, you know, I have to drop my <laughs> son to school and drive past your house. Well, maybe we should do a trade, some truffles for some Kringle. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, as Fabrizio has showed you, uh, the recipe is also in this lovely Christmas cookbook um, on page 166. Um, so yeah, this is just a really easy way to make edible gifts. And I actually, I had actually hadn't made it before, um, you know, the Christmas class. Uh, this week when I was um, trying the recipe and I couldn't believe that I hadn't made it because you'll see on my Instagram I'm always making chocolate things, chocolate mousse, chocolate ice cream, so I, I couldn't believe it. I scoffed through those lint balls uh, by the packet. I know that you can get 16 in a box for like five pounds which is just so expensive in comparison to these and obviously you'll see we can do lots of different toppings and you can you know, you don't have to add brandy in and actually what you'll see is after this is finished, we will split the um, mixture, 350 grams um, in uh, one bowl, which doesn't have the brandy in, and 350 grams in another bowl. So then you can kind of decide who might like liquor uh, truffles and who wouldn't. And the mixture makes, makes loads. And I think the whole idea is when you're actually making your own, you really do have, you know, you can totally personalize it, um, which you'll, yeah, I, I'm totally with you. I mean, at Christmas time, so many people are buying the Lindor um, ch Lint uh, chocolates, but, you know, the Thermomix tempers chocolate so well. Um, you know, I've, I've been around for so long, but there's a story that we had um, about 10 years ago. Um, there's a chocolatier competition, a famous chocolatier competition. And the famous story is um, someone, one chocolatier took their Thermomix to temper their chocolates for the first time. He was a new entrant and he came about 11th in the chocolate competition. And the next year he uh, came first. Because whilst everyone else was uh, tempering their chocolate, you know, in a banmarie on top of the stove, he was tempering the chocolate in the Thermomix and then being able to do all the other stuff that he needed to do during the time of, of the competition. And at that time, they actually released um, a book called I Love Chocolate, I Love Thermomix. Ellie, do you have that? I actually don't. I probably need to get it. <laughs> So there was there were two versions uh, the first one obviously was even before the tm uh, 5 and tm 31 came out and then they released this uh, J this is actually written by Janie Turner um, and they released this which is again the the digital version for the tm5 and dm6 so i'll add a link to that as well but it's it gives you the full introduction and I mean this is a chocolate chocolate the haven of, of recipes for the Thermomix so yeah absolutely now I think we have some questions while you're while you're still tempering your chocolate and a lot of <laughs> to do with um the caramel being too dark um when they do the caramel recipe on cookie dough 
Uh, is there a recipe that produces a lighter caramel? Um, and I'm just, I'm trying to think on the spot here um, and, and feel free if there's any advisors and more experienced people on the, on the call here in the chat box. Do you either use, um, I guess what my question is, are you using sort of uh, brown or soft brown sugars or are you using um, white granulated sugar or do we just caramelize it yet less? Because I think the caramelized uh, recipe is about 22 minutes and I'm thinking at 15, 16, would that be enough if they want a lighter version? Yeah, would be um, enough. Yeah, lighter sugar or less time. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly what I'm thinking, yeah. That's um, hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, there have, been, there have been a lot of questions about Lebkuchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, one of the one of the good things about Cookie Do is that you have access to all the recipes from all over the world, which means you have access to German and Austrian recipes too. The downside is that they are in German, but. Um, they are really, really, really good Lebkuchen recipes on the German and the Austrian portal. Um, if I could translate one of them. Um, well, what do you need? Barbara, I'm just going to step in. Um, the great thing is if you don't speak the language, you put it on your laptop and Google translates for you. That's, yeah. That's one thing. Um, you, need, you need rye flour for uh, Lebkuchen for the original recipes. Um, you can get that here too but you have to grind it once again. So you just put in the flour in the Thermomix and turn it on speed 10 for a few seconds so that it's really um, perfectly grinded. And then every, every Lebkuchen, Lebkuchen uh, recipe will work uh, here too. Um, I can, I can um, put the link for two, my two favorite recipes um, in, in the chat box. Well, um, I think Barbara, if you send it to me, then I'll add it in the follow-up email. Okay, that's even that's even easier. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Because not everyone has the yeah uh, the links. How are we doing, Ellie? So I just want to show you this good, delicious ganache, which has just been um, tempering away, and I now just the recipe to to divide the recipe. Um, it's really easy. They're just asking you to set your scales to 350 grams. So obviously we all know we can press the three dots and we can go to the scales and we can take out 350 grams of our mixture. Now, obviously you need to remember to use two different color bowls. So you know which one is gonna have the brandy in and which one uh, isn't. So I've gone for blue for brandy and um, white for non. So I'm just gonna take 350 grams out of here. And actually I'm just gonna do the quick way and kind of guess about um, half, but I did it last night and you take 350 grams and you're left with 300 grams in there, which is, um, is great. Um, and then I'm just going to uh, add my four teaspoons of brandy and actually, I tested it last night and it's it's not too much, it's perfect. Um, and I'm gonna insert the measuring cup again. Let's just stir down the mixture from the sides. And obviously you know never to uh, hit your spoon onto the side of, of the bowl because you don't want to uh, mess up with the scales. So if, you, if you're one of those people that feel tempted to kind of scrape around the bowl and then tap it on the top, just take, just take the bowl off. Um, the Thermomix and, and do it like that. And it's just gonna stir that brandy in for six seconds on speed three. And then we're going to uh, coat them. And actually what you need to do is put, um, put the mixture in, in a bowl. So that's the brandy um, uh, half. So I'm gonna put that in my blue bowl uh, later um, because actually like Ankita, uh, that needs to go in the fridge for two hours just to set because obviously you can't roll them when it's too um, runny. So you just need a couple of hours for it to set a bit in the fridge. Um, and then I'm going to put my mixing bowl on, my new mixing bowl. And I'm just going to 
weigh the toppings, which obviously I've already done. So it's the 20 grams of uh, coconut, um, 20 grams of cocoa powder, um, and uh, 80 grams of pistachio nuts, which we're actually gonna grind. So I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to grind nuts. Bear in mind the pistachio nuts need to be um, unshelled. So if you do buy a packet from um, you know, the supermarket, uh, you, I bought a 250 grams of, shell, of, of pistachios in their shell and that was sort of just enough. So just beware if you're going for the shelled amount. You need to put that in and I'm just going to blitz it for two seconds. I don't know. If can, I don't know if you've seen it. There's a question uh, or a suggestion by someone. Uh, but Fiona, I believe, uh, yeah, Fiona is asking if we are considering doing a sous vide class for the future. So we have we have a number of classes, virtual classes that have just been released at the end of November. Obviously, um, we're doing the Christmas class first. But we have a, um, a number of classes. I don't think sous vide is included in that purely because, and I, I'm going to, you know, take a punt at this. Um, once you actually put your, your meat or your vegetable or your fruit, I, I, there's a really nice uh, pineapple um, and chili sous vide recipe. <laughs> you then just cook it for 45 minutes to two and a half hours on sous vide. So I'm not sure how much, you know, people want to see a, a class of, of, of us just standing around and, and, and waiting for it to boil. Um, but what we can do um, between the team, uh, I can actually get a, a list of our favorite sous vide recipes and, and perhaps send that across as well. So I can see um, Tony is the one who asked, maybe I'll, I'll send her, you know, my top five sous vide recipes um, in the Thermomix. Uh, great, so I've now got the hazelnuts back in the machine and I'm just going to um, give them a blitz. The recipe says two seconds. The great thing about uh, experience is that you can, if you think all oh, two seconds won't be long enough and experience tells you otherwise, I'm just gonna increase that to four seconds and I'm just going to blitz that on speed six. Said no lid detected. That's the great thing about the thermics. It tells you if you're about to do anything wrong. Um, there we are. There we are. And we've got beautifully chopped um, hazelnuts. And what you need to do is just make sure you put all your um, ingredients into a shallow dish so that you can roll them straight into um, your bowl. So I've got kind of my cocoa powder, my pistachios, uh, my, pistachios my hazelnuts and my um, uh, desecrated coconut. And I'm going to get my um, mixture. This is my brandy. This is my after two hours in the fridge. And a little tip, I'm going to use a melon scoop. These are quite um, old school, so you might not have one. But this melon scoop kind of is perfect for making um, uh, your rounded uh, truffles. Uh, obviously, you could use, just use your hands or you could use a tablespoon or a, um, uh, the measuring spoons. But I just find this is great because I take my kind of melon ball of chocolate truffle and then I uh, put it in my hand and I've got this perfect ball and then I'm just going to choose, oh, I'm going to put it in my coconut. So I'm just going to rub it in the coconut, get it all nice and coated and it's um, very easy and there it is. And actually what you can do, I'll just add it to my... Uh, and then obviously you you want to cellophane them up. So these are some truffles that I made um, just before. So I've got my uh, brand, brandy um, coconut ones and I've got my non-branded uh, cocoa dusted truffles there. And obviously you can package them up really nicely. There's loads of different things that you can get on Amazon or et cetera um, to package them. So there we are. I'll be going to my neighbor to thank her for looking after my children this morning. <laughs> 
Oh, that's amazing. I, you know, I, I like my, I mean, I, I, I know virtual classes are so hard in one sense because my mouth is salivating from the, from the thought of just eating those truffles, Ellie. So, um, oh gosh, I wish, I mean, thing is we all have them mixes. We're all gonna be able to have, make these recipes this afternoon. So for our final recipe, um, we're gonna do a Rudolph mocktail. And um, this is just a really sweet, um, you know, drink in the Thermomix. You have to um, make the, the cranberry syrup the night, well, not the night before, but it needs to be cooled. So I made this last night. And what it was is 250 grams of uh, fresh or frozen uh, cranberries, uh, 80 grams, I think, yeah, I think 80 grams of sugar and then about the same uh, of water. You then cook it for 10 minutes until you get to this, um, this syrup and we're ready to, to start um, where I was. Now, interesting again, what's really great about the Thermomix is because I stopped the recipe halfway through um, the evening, it does say, do I want to resume the recipe, which is where I do want to start again um, from the, the place that I had stopped last night. You then sieve it, by the way, sorry, I did say, I forgot that. Um, once you've actually done that, you put it through a sieve and then you have um, this, it's syrup. So our next step is 300 grams of ice. So back here um, and again we're going to crush this so you will hear the power of the thermomix I know sometimes people say oh gosh it's so noisy but the fact of you know the, the sheer power of the thermomix is amazing I have multiple bowls and the way I stack bowls is actually by putting the measuring cup inside um, and then stacking them up. And um, my husband's just come back from uh, my, my son's one-to-one -one football. And there's been many a time that the Thermomix has obliterated the cup uh, because someone hasn't looked inside. So you see the power of the Thermomix um, with that. So press next and it's 10 seconds speed 10. Sharon's asked a question about white chocolate truffles. I've actually never made white chocolate truffles, but I think you would do it just the same, but perhaps melt the, cho the white chocolate for less time, because obviously the dark chocolate, you need um, longer time to melt. Um, I don't know if anyone else has experienced uh, with white chocolate, but I you just need less time um, for it melt to melt. Right, so we've uh, got that very, very nicely. Um, powdered so it says scrape down the mixing bowl press next add the reserves syrup which is all here and mix uh, again so it's 10 seconds speed four this time. Now we're gonna add ginger ale to this. Um, and that's 700 grams. And also, Ankita, can I just add, you're, you're of course adding ginger ale, but if you wanted to make a cocktail um, for the adults, for us, okay. let's say, we could use, of course, Prosecco, Cava, um, or Champagne, whichever. But yeah, of course, so it's a, again, it's a very versatile recipe because you can make it as a mocktail or as a cocktail. Yes, that is true. That is true. Um, and it says mix gently with the um, and I was actually thinking because interesting enough 
even ginger ale isn't that easy to buy um in the shops um i went you know looking around yesterday and it wasn't the easiest um thing to to buy so it's really interesting to to see i was thinking you know lemonade might be a little bit easier as well so what's really interesting about this recipe it does say um that we're going to do that but i'm going to show you how you actually um serve these um in in a in a bowl and i wanted i could have made these live but i think it's really quite nice to show you how to make it so this is essentially what we're going to put on it which is a little rudolph um marshmallow and the easiest way to to do that is you take Okay, so you take a, a fresh cranberry um, and put it on a cocktail stick with a marshmallow, stick it in, then two cloves for the eyes. Which is just there. And two pieces. Um, oh, I have one piece, I'll we'll grab this one. Um, two pieces of thyme for the rudel. Um, oh, there it is. Uh, for the rudel uh, reindeer ears. And it's just such a cute little thing. So when you actually have your, your glass of your rudolph mocktail, put it in. With your rice. So some of it's not been mixed fully. Let me do that again. And just pop your Rudolph like that as a little um, Rudolph malt pail. So I'm going to try this because we're going to. I mean, it's 11 o'clock in the morning, so I think. The, the, <laughs> the mocktail version is definitely uh, really nice, but um, very refreshing, really Christmassy. And again, all of the recipes that we have done um, today are in the book. Um, so I was going to say, ladies, I mean, Ellie, um, Barbara, have we got the final, Fabrizio, have we got the final versions of the yeah. ready yet? So let's yeah. have a look. Uh, Fabrizio first. Let's have a look at your hot artichoke. Oh, very nice. Really nice. nice. And you need to switch the oven on, taking out of the oven when it's really bubbly and um, golden in colour. So it's really oh, nice. nice. It needs five minutes. Of water. Yeah. And then you can use a cheese straw. Yeah. Yeah. As, I, as I suggest today, yeah? Okay. Barbara, how about your cheese straws? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and Ellie, obviously we should have saw yours. Here are the truffles, but you know what? I'm just so tempted just to bite it, so. <laughs> That's mm. not fair. That's not fair. Mm. Not at all. <laughs> And I will show you when we were talking about what we're making, I've made a heart. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you because this is live, it, I need a new oven. I had this on for 20 minutes and it's slightly burnt at the top. So funny enough, anyone who does follow me knows that I actually ordered a new oven a couple of weeks ago because one side of my oven keeps burning. And instead of 20 minutes, that was at 15. So it's a good thing I have my second dough ready because that's the one I'm gonna be remaking with the rest of it. I mean, I haven't tried, well, I am gonna try it because And yes, I mean, it's perfectly soft. So it is. Mm, actually, it's just a little bit crispy on top, but really wonderful and moist, um, the rest of it as well. So yeah, I keep I'm funny with, uh, with the tasty, I'm going to try. 
I know, I know. It's really hard to watch. I'm really sorry, Talia. Um, oh gosh, now I'm going to lick my fingers too. Mm. I can't decide if I like the cheese straws warm more or cold. But yes, the, oh. yesterday the bunch that didn't didn't even survive the the cold part. <laughs> I know, I know. So I wanted to thank everyone for coming and and giving us your time um, today. Um, thank you for the advisors who helped as well. Please let us know um, which one your favorite recipe is. And, you know, um, after we can, you know, I will send you all the, reci um, the recipe links this, um, this afternoon or as soon as I finish this call, actually, with the recipe links, um, the offers for hosting a demonstration for that fabulous um, silicon baking mat. Um, we still are in Black Friday. So if anyone has a TM5 or a TM6 and doesn't have an extra bowl, the absolutely wonderful um, offer that I have, well, well, we've all scoured, they actually have a Thermomix Christmas bundle, which is a bowl, um, a blade cover, a spatula, and the Christmas book for 200 pounds. So I will add that as a link, um, both for TM5 and TM6, uh, which is available until Monday. Um, and obviously, as, as Chris and many of us have said, what's better than having one Thermomix, but two. So we also have a Black Friday offer, which is one Thermomix, um, one TM6 and one TM5 for $15.99. Um, Thank you so much for joining us. Um, there will be a survey monkey attached to it as well. So if you could give us feedback and if anyone has any questions, um, we'll stick around for a couple of minutes to answer anything you have. But otherwise, thank you so much. And we hope to see you uh, at the next virtual class. And Take Keita, care. One, one other thing I've spotted on the Black Friday deals is um, when you were making the, um, the dip, Yep. Um, there were dishes being used and everything, but of course you can get the Ultimate Rockstar bundle on the website as well, uh, down from, um, you're saving £85 on the bundle. That's right, three. that's right, that's right. So on November offer, at the beginning of November, um, we had, actually it was an October and beginning of November offer, which was these fabulous, I mean, Volvac have made some stoneware, and if you buy them singly you get them on 10 percent discount but if you buy them as a complete set which uh, chris just mentioned is the ultimate rock stars you get the the most expensive piece of rock star which is betty so they've called anna is the round one you've got ben which is the baking dish paul which is the pizza stone and Anne uh, and betty which is a casserole dish uh, which is worth 85 pounds. The ultimate rock star means that you get Betty free. So yeah, that's another fabulous, fabulous deal. So it's a total of one, three, five, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, the, the, the pizza stone, I've made the second bunch after cheese straws on the pizza stone and it's just so good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the great thing with the pizza stone, uh, you know, any of the stoneware, you don't actually need a baking mat or baking paper because they, they season and, and cook at the same time. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Um, okay, so we have uh, bought chicken crown in error, which Tony has just said, what can I make le over with leftover white chicken? It's dry. Mm. Tony, do you have any leeks or carrots in your house? Or any veg, to be honest? Yeah, okay. My, my favorite of, of, of leftover chicken is actually the chicken and leek pie, uh, which comes from the original British Isles on a plate book, but obviously it's on cookie do um, because it's creamy. Um, so you, so you so you cook, you know, you can use leftover chicken um, and it's chicken, carrots, leeks, um, to be honest, any veg, um, put it in a pie and you make a, a, a pastry um, 
with the Thermomix as well. It's perfect for a day like this. Look how gray it is outside. So yeah, hopefully that um, gives you an idea. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.